Firstly, I would like to express my sincere thanks to Her Excellency Megawati Sukarno Putri and to the leadership of this great political party that she leads, the Indonesian Democratic Party of Struggle, PDIP, for inviting me to this commemoration of this major event at Bung Karno on the theme Bung Karno in the Eyes of the World. To answer to the question how to do, how to you know the figure of Sukarno, I would like to say that the personality of Ahmed Sukarno is a source of inspiration for all peoples who aspire to freedom and emancipation around the world. Its course of struggle and resistance, strong with sacrifice, is still a reference for the peoples who continue to this day their struggle to free themselves from the yoke of colonialism. Sukarno has dedicated his life to, to defending the universal values of freedom, justice, equality, and living together. He was one of the fiercest opponents of the policies of ra racial uh, discrimination and colonial slavery. <clears throat> the late Indonesian President Ahmed Sukarno was a tireless fighter for the recovery of the freedom and independence of his people. His contribution to the liberation of his country, Indonesia, was decisive. This commemoration comes the day after the June 1st celebration of Pancasila, which is the ideology on which the Indonesian constitution is built. As a reminder, on June 1st in 1945, President Ahmed Sukarno pronounced the principles of Pancasila on which the Indonesian constitution is based. The active participation of President Ahmed Sukarno in the Third World Emancipation Movement is crucial. President Sukarno played a major role in the preparation, holding, and success of the Bandon Conference of April 1955 which was a great event for the peoples still under colonial rule. This Bandung conference enabled many liberation movements to make their people's voices heard internationally. To answer the question, how did Sukarno inspire you as a representative of a friendly country in Indonesia? I would say that as an Algerian citizen, President Ahmed Sukarno has always had my personal respect and appreciation. His distinct personality has impressed me from an early age. Today I am very proud to be here in Indonesia as Ambassador of the People's Democratic Republic of Algeria. I consider myself lucky uh, to have been designated as Ambassador to the President Sukarno's country. The first thing that, come, that came to my mind when I first landed at Sukarno Hatta Airport in 2015 was this historical figure whose resonance has reached all corners of the world. The image of immortal leader Sukarno followed me on the various visits I made to several regions of this beautiful country. Through these visits I have witnessed the many great achievements of this great man. I believe that one of the most important of these achievements is the unity of the Indonesian people with their different races, languages, and religions. Sukarno has worked to build the foundations of his country's national unity through the promotion of what is called here Binika Tungalika. As ambassador of Algeria to Indonesia, I have come with feelings of affection, respect, and appreciation to other Algerian people have for President Ahmed Sukarno and the Indonesian people. And I am here to convey these sincere feelings arising from the privileged place occupied by this great man holds in the hearts of Algeria. The third question was about how is Sukarno's role as the first president of the Republic of Indonesia known to the people of my country? As I mentioned earlier, Ahmed Sukarno is one of the historical leaders who have a very special place in Algeria. Algerians remember that Indonesia 
under President Ahmed Sukarno, was one of the most prominent supporters of the struggle of the Algerian people for their freedom and independence. The Afro-Asian Conference in Bandung was the first diplomatic activity in international forum of the Algerian Revolution. Algeria was represented by a delegation made up of four people. This historic meeting made it possible to achieve the objective of the Algerian Revolution, which is the internationalization of the Algerian cause. Members of the Algerian delegation made up of of Mr. Mohamed Yazid, Hussein Ait Ahmed, Shadlin Maki, and Hussein Lahwal received a warm popular welcome in Indonesia and were received by the late President Ahmed Sukarno. Algerians will always remember the great support given by Indonesia to the revolution of their country throughout the support committee for the struggle for Algerian independence. The National Liberation Front, FLN, appointed Mr. Mohamed Ibn Hiya and Mr. Lakhdar Brahimi to represent him on this committee. The later represented Algeria is Indonesia until its independence in 1962. President Ahmed Sukarno made available to this committee a villa located at Jalan Teku, city de Tiro, number 60 in the center of the capital Jakarta. From 1956, this villa became the seat of the representation of the National Liberation Front in Indonesia. President Sukarno also recognized the provisional government of the Algerian Republic, JPRA, proclaimed in 1958. He received in 1961 in Jakarta Mr. Farhat Abbas, president of the GPRA. In memory of this great historical leader, a stall dedicated to President Sukarno was inaugurated in Algiers on July 18. 2020. This monument will remain a testimony of the unlimited support given by this great man to the Algerian revolution. This support will remain forever engraved in the Algerian collective memory. Bilateral cooperation covers several areas as important and strategic as energy, construction, trade, training, and archives, to name only this sector. In the field of archives, Algeria supports the Indonesian proposal to inscribe on the International Register of the Memory of the World of UNESCO the archives of the first summit of the movement of non-alignment countries of, uh, one, of 1961 and the archives of the late Sukarno titled To Build the World Anew. To Build the World Anew. At the end of my speech, allow me to invite Indonesian and Algerian citizens, especially young people, to learn more about the common story of their two countries and the great sacrifices made by their ancestors to free their countries from the yoke colonialism, from the yoke of colonialism. I also invite them to seize the opportunities offered by uh, modern means of communication, in particular social networks to build communication bridges between them in order to achieve greater rapprochement between the two brotherly peoples. In conclusion, I would like to reiterate my thanks and gratitude to Her Excellency Ibu Megawati Sukarno Putri, the Indonesian Democratic Struggle Party PDIP, as well as the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia for giving me this opportunity to renew my great respect and appreciation to the late Ahmed Sukarno and to the reiterate our commitment to continue working to strengthen relations of solidarity, friendship, consultation, and cooperation between our two brothers' country. Thank you for your kind attention. Tiada pernah ber
berhenti Seribu rintang jalan berliku Bukanlah suatu penghalang Hadapilah segala tantangan Ciptakanlah kerukunan bangsa Kobarkanlah dalam dada semangat jiwa Pancasila Untuk tiada mungkin tanpa berjuang